So you have a Jeep JL Wrangler or a JT Gladiator and you've used up all your Jeep Wave bucks on oil changes or you're in a situation like me where you got high mileage and all that stuff no longer applies to you and it's just expensive every time you go to the dealership. But it doesn't have to be that way. And you can start with something as simple as changing your own oil. They charge an exorbitant amount for something that is so simple. It's inexpensive materials, filter, oil, and just a few wrenches, and that's it. So if you wanna learn how to simply change your oil on a Jeep JL Wrangler or JT Gladiator, this is the video for you. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome back to the Gator Overland channel. I'm John, and today is going to be another addition to our Gator Overland Tech Series, or the Go Tech Series, where I tell you everything you need to know, nothing you don't. That way you spend less time listening to me, more time switching things out and getting yourself back on the road. Today we're going to be doing an oil change on our 2020 JT Gladiator. It's going to be the same for a JL Wrangler with a 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 gasoline engine, not the diesel. So what we have here is five quarts of oil. That's all you will need. Actually comes in one jug, ready to go. It's going to be a 0 W20 Platinum Full Synthetic by Pennzoil is what's recommended. I use Wix in basically everything. It's going to be a WL110XP. We'll go over on the installation on that. For draining the oil from the pan, you'll need a half inch socket, 13 millimeter will work. And you'll need for the filter that's up on top, a 15 16 and I think a 24 millimeter is equivalent to that. Whether you have half inch drive, three eighths drive, you'll need some long extensions, maybe one all together and possibly a three eighths drive or just an assortment of wrenches that are half inch and 15 16 That's all you need. Now, as far as for cleanup and prep, you can use a actual basin like this that's designed for catching oil. You can actually bring this up to the auto parts store and have them drain it out for you. This is for any spills. This is just catnip. You can use the industrial grade stuff, but this is inexpensive. You can get it at Dollar General if you have to. Obviously, we'll wipe up with some paper towels and the wind blew away, but I have some actual cardboard here to put on the ground just to prevent any having to use anything else. That's it. First order of operation is to prep the drain area with cardboard or other disposable materials to catch any spills that may happen. Next, locate the drain basin just rearward of the drain plug to account for the oil stream arc when the plug is removed. Next, go to the top side and remove the oil filler cap to alleviate any potential vacuum while draining the oil. Oddly, this engine has the oil filter cap on top, which is convenient for access but can be messy when removing. As a preventive measure, you'll want to put some paper towel around the perimeter of the filter housing to catch any drips when removing. If you drip some, that's okay. Just try to wipe it up to prevent any burnt oil smell when the engine warms up. Next, grab your half inch socket, go underneath and remove the oil pan plug lefty loosey. It shouldn't be too tight, but once it's finger loose, get a good grip on it and carefully twist out twist by twist, giving inward pressure. When you see that it's not coming out anymore, just give a quick pull to the left or the right and the oil should flow freely without any mess. While the oil is draining, go topside and grab your 15 16 socket and extension and remove the oil filter cap. This shouldn't be very tight either. Once you've loosened it enough, you can back it out the rest of the way by hand and remove. You can have a paper towel handy in the other hand, guide it out, prevent any oil from dripping. Once you have the assembly removed, go ahead, step off to the side and prep for changing out the filter. Start by grasping the old filter with a rag and firmly pulling apart from the cap. After that, remove the old O-ring from the filter cap. You may be able to do this with your fingernails, but I find it easiest to do it with a pick. Once you've done that, you want to compare the new filter to the old filter and make sure everything matches. After that, you want to slide on the new O-ring and lube it up with some oil. I used some excess oil from the original filter here. After that, just pop the new filter in place on the filter cap. You're good to go. Now that you have your filter assembly ready to go, you can go ahead and install into the engine. Just line it up and ensure the threads are threading properly, righty-tighty, and then tighten it down with your 15 16 socket to where it's just snug. Now grab your half inch socket, go underneath and confirm the oil has completely drained from the pan and replace your oil pan plug. And it's pretty important to do that. Righty tighty, you can do it with your fingers until it gets snug. And then once you put your socket on there, just go a quarter of a turn. Wipe away any excess oil that may be dripping from the pan. Now it's time to pour in the new oil. This engine requires five quarts and there's five quarts in this jug. It's best to use a funnel for pouring in the oil, but if you don't have one, you can use a makeshift funnel out of cardboard if need be. After you've emptied all the new oil into the engine, you want to wait a few minutes, let it all flow down into the oil pan before checking the dipstick for proper fill level. Once you've confirmed proper oil fill level, go ahead and replace your filler net cap. 
Before starting your engine, you'll want to reset your oil life. Without your foot on the brake, press the start button twice into the run position. Go to your oil life menu on your display and hold down the OK button on your steering wheel for a few seconds and your oil life will reset to 100%. Now that you've reset your oil life, you can now put your foot on the brake, press the start button again, turn your engine on and allow the oil pump to start flowing. Once your engine has been running for a few minutes, you can go ahead and turn it off. It's always good to go ahead and double check your dipstick to ensure the oil level is in the proper operating range. Once all this is complete, you're done. Well, that about wraps things up. If you enjoyed today's video, found it informative or helpful in learning how to change your own oil, not only that, but saving yourself a lot of money, go ahead, give us a big thumbs up, let us know how we're doing. Share if you'd like, I'd appreciate that. For a heads up on any future installs or adventures, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, notification bell, you can follow us along our journey. Don't forget to check the description below for Amazon affiliate links for everything you saw in this video today, as well as contact information should you need to get a hold of me. Remember, we at Gator Overland encourage each and every one of you to take a daily moment to unplug and reconnect with the outdoors, even if it's just for a few minutes. Have fun, keep it safe, and just go. Thanks, y'all.